simplicity Longing for purity To worship you in spirit and truth Only you Lord, strip it My first love, only you. You're the reason I see. The reason I see. Yes, my heart will see how I love. to New Heights here at Pulaski Heights United Methodist Church, where our mission is to love God, love neighbor, and change the world. Uh, my name is Ken Weatherford. I am the uh, Minister of Worship Arts here for New Heights, and, uh, and it's a, a joy to welcome you here this morning. 
Uh, I've got a couple of announcements and, and a few things I want to point out and call to your attention. Uh, this morning, first, um, uh, let's see here. No, we're not doing Let's Talk. We've already done that. That's done. It's over. Sorry if you didn't come here for the 10 o'clock hour. You, you've missed it, and it's, it's, it's done. Um, but something to point out, under the opportunities, the very first thing, it talks a little bit about the sermon series that we're about to begin. It's uh, called Let Us Pray. We're starting it today. If you, if you haven't noticed, the, the look is... It's a little different today. It's, it's a little less construction and, and VBS oriented and a, and a lot more candles up here. Um, if you would like to volunteer to help out over the next five weeks lighting these candles, there's almost 70 of them. And uh, that's a lot to do every, for each service. So uh, let, let me know if you, if you want to help us out. But underneath the opportunities on your bulletin, there's a prayer. And, and it's, it says, Holy God, you have called us to be your hands and feet in this world. Help us discern a great need here in Little Rock, Arkansas, and how we, Pulaski Heights United Methodist Church, might meet that need. We lift up our church and we lift up our city to you in the name of the living Christ, amen. And we invite you to take this prayer home with you um, and to pray this over these next five, six weeks uh, and beyond as we here at, at, at this church try to discern what we can be doing in this city. What is the great need in Little Rock and, and in, the, in the area around here that we can be meeting? What is that need that this church can be targeting and going after and, and, and meeting that need here? Uh, so if you would pray that with us. Also uh, pointing out our Guatemalacal, Guatemalacal, really? Guatemala medical mission team. That is a tongue twister. Uh, left on, on the plane yesterday, they, uh, they headed out and um, are, are down in Guatemala now uh, serving on our behalf. So keep, please keep them in your prayers uh, as they uh, have a lot of work ahead of them this week. Um, also, just a, a great joy to, to lift up um, on Friday evening, unbeknownst to the youth who were at, um, who were at uh, assembly, senior high assembly, uh, Jenny... Um, left in, in the wee hours Friday evening because uh, she needed to get to the hospital. Uh, Jenny Williams, our associate youth minister, she, uh, she made her way to Little Rock and, and yesterday evening um, had her baby, um, Clark, and uh, she is doing well. Um, all are doing well. Uh, Casey and I are going to go visit them this afternoon and, and take them your love. So, um, but uh, just a great joy, and we're so excited for Jenny and, and Brandon and Clark. Um, I invite you all to stand as you are able as we join together this morning in our call to worship. O oh God, because you are the source of all life and love and being, we call you Creator. Because we know the history of your presence among your covenanted people and honor their tradition, we call you Lord. Because our Savior, Jesus Christ, your obedient child, you knew intimately and spoke of you so, we call you Father. Because you are present in the act of birth and because you shelter, nurture, and care for us, we call you Mother. Because you hold us up and give us strength and courage when we are weak and in need, we call you Sustainer. Because we know beyond the pain lies your promise of all things made new, we call you hope. Because you are the means of liberation and the way to freedom, we call you Redeemer. Let us pray. Confident that you will hear, we call upon you with all the names that make you real to us, the names that create an image in our minds and hearts, an image that our soul can understand and touch, and yet we know that you are more than all of these. So Creator, Lord, Father, Mother, Sustainer, Hope, our Redeemer. Fill this space. Fill our hearts with your holy presence here this morning. Set this place on fire with love for you. As we cry out, as we sing together, as we gather to worship your name. All blessing and power, glory and honor be unto you, our great God. And let the people say, Amen.
Great is your faithfulness Great is your faithfulness You never change You never fail, oh God True are your promises True are your promises You never change You never fail, oh God So we raise up holy hands To praise the Holy One Who was and is and is to come Yo 
in love and you're slow to anger. Your name is great and your heart is kind. For all your goodness I will keep on seeing. Ten thousand reasons for my heart to find. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I'll worship Your holy name. draws near and my time has come still my soul will sing your praise unending ten thousand years and then to invite all the children to come forward. Got a special message for you this morning. All the young Christians. All young people. There we go. Oh, lots. And young at heart for that matter. So, Absolutely. you know, if you count yourself as one of those, you're oh, welcome come to on, come everyone. forward too. That's right. I know there are probably six at least at your house, right? <laughs> and a few computers and maybe some iPads or tablets, I should say. I have my own tablet. You have your own tablet. You are a lucky girl. Okay, well, you might know, not know about something called tech support. You know what that is. Tech support. That's when someone calls up the phone com or the tech support and says, I 
can't read my email because the screen is black and I can't read my email. And the tech support says, turn your computer on. <laughs> uh, tech support is when you have problems with your computers or your tablets or your phone. You call and ask for help. But remember to turn it on first, okay? Now, suppose the problem that you have is not with something outside of you like your computer, but it's something inside of you. If you have a problem inside of you, who, who do you call? We had lots of interesting answers the first service. The doctor, <laughs> okay. Someone said 911. Who do we call when we are, when, they're, when we're, I don't know, what problems do we have? Do you have problems sometimes? Are you ever sad? Are you ever sad? Are you ever lonely? Do you ever mess up? I bet you don't, do you? Sometimes we all mess up and we feel bad and we need help. We need in the inside kind of help. So you know who we can call? You know what we can do when we're feeling bad on the inside? That's right. We can do what? Pray. Say it real loud. Pray. Pray. Very good. We can pray. We can call on God. We can call Jesus. We know Jesus walks right with us all the time, but we can stop and talk to Jesus and have a prayer. That's what we call prayer when we talk to Jesus. And this is what the Bible says about that. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer. In the day of my trouble, I call on you, for you will answer me. So when we have problems like loneliness or sadness or we mess up or what else can you think of? We're afraid. We might be afraid. What are we going to do? Pray. We're going to pray. That's right. Okay, let's bow our heads now and pray. Holy God, I thank you for these children, for uh, their hearts and their lives. We ask you to guide them and direct them and teach them how to be um, open to you and to pray to you every day. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, boys and girls. See you next time. At this time, we um, dismiss our kindergartners and first graders. Y'all can head off to Children's Church. Just be sure to take an adult back there with you to the back to sign you out. As you're able, we invite you all to stand and join with us.
May it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. Amen, amen. Would you please remain standing as you are able for the reading of God's holy word this morning? My reader's not here. I got it. All right, no worries. This is uh, Matthew chapter 6, verse 5 through 13. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. When you are praying, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need even before you ask Him. Pray then in this way. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And do not bring us to the time of trial, but rescue us from the evil one. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. After being challenged by his friend, a man said, I do know the Lord's Prayer. Then he began to recite, Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. And he went on, and his friend was stunned. And he said, You do know the Lord's Prayer. Well, many of us spent our childhoods repeating that prayer every night as we were taught to pray by our parents. I remember my mother coming in each night to hear my prayers. Grace was said at most meals, especially at dinner. And we learned the Lord's Prayer at church. Because if you grew up in the Methodist church, it was said every Sunday. And if you haven't ever noticed, it said in unison. We all say it together. And as we repeated those words, those words became part of us, just as other blessings and hymns did. If you didn't grow up in a church home, you may have had a similar experience if you said the Pledge of Allegiance every day at school the words became part of us. In the next few weeks, we're going to be focusing on prayer, as, as Ken has said. But prayer is a broad, very broad and very deep subject, almost unfathomable. But whether you know the Lord's Prayer or not, we will be invited to explore prayer Maybe to pray in ways that we haven't experienced before. But most importantly, to make a habit of prayer. The writer of Thessalonians urges us, rejoice always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. And throughout the the Bible. Prayer is an important part of life. The church's prayer book, in a sense, is the book of Psalms. Here's the most amazing thing about prayer. The goal of prayer, I believe, it's that prayer has the great power to change us. Prayer has the great power to transform 
our lives. Theologian John Killinger says this about the Lord's Prayer in particular. If we never uttered another prayer in our lifetime, but could repeat the Lord's Prayer every day with complete sincerity and fervent intention, it would totally alter our existence. We would become stronger and happier and inwardly richer than we ever imagined. It isn't any wonder, he goes on to say, that the earliest bishops and pastors of the Christian church devised the idea of assigning the saying of the Lord's Prayer 50, 100, 500 times as penance for people's sins. If anything will burn into our consciousness and change our attitudes toward God, toward the world, toward our personal needs, it is this magnificent prayer. We know that prayer is important, but how do we pray? Are you good at it? I've had mixed reviews over the years. Some years I was very good, or good is not the right word, but I spent a lot of time in silence with the Lord and did a lot of journaling. And, and then there are other times in my life that in my hectic um, days, I'm yelling out to God all day, Hi, God, watch over Joe today. And later I might yell out, Oh, Lord, give me patience. Or, God, why am I such a mess? Does any of that sound familiar to you? Or at night, we, we lie in our beds and we get a couple of sentences out, and then we're off to sleep. But here's a clue. Apparently, even the disciples weren't real clear on prayer, and they were good Jews. So if we're feeling like we could use some help, we're in good company. For they said to Jesus, teach us how to pray. And so today, we're going to concentrate on the lines of the Lord's Prayer. Of course, the first line, our Father who art in heaven, you know, we're all in relationships of all kinds, whether it be our parents and our siblings or our spouses or our friends. Relationships are important. And to keep them strong and functioning, we must communicate. So first of all, when we are praying, we are communicating. We come into the presence of God, and this is the beginning of prayer. And prayer begins the relationship. Not only the relationship with God, but the relationship with others. This prayer doesn't start my father, it starts our father. And so we have this notion that together we pray. Not just in this space, not just in this church, but across the world. Can you imagine how many thousands, millions even, people pray this prayer together every day? Now, so that we don't get nervous or intimidated right off the bat, think of relationships, um, think of your relationship with God as you think of your relationship with your friends because communicating with God doesn't require some magic words to impress God or words that open the door so we can get what we want. God isn't concerned about form. God is concerned about connection. Mary Lou Redding, who is a Christian writer says each of us, every one of us gets to name God. 
and the name we choose does not change God, whose unchangeable and unchanging nature is always to love us and to draw us into wholeness. But you heard all those other names that we used this morning in the call to worship. Jesus calls God Father, but for some calling God Father doesn't doesn't bring up, doesn't um, recall a welcoming relationship. So the important thing is that you use a word for God that enables you to feel God's love and that you know you are gladly welcomed. Hallowed be thy name. Whatever name we use, we are meant to honor that name, to hallow it. That means that whatever we do, whatever thoughts we have, whatever words we speak, whatever actions we take, they are to honor God. I'll try to remember that the next time I'm screaming at the person in front of me who obviously can't drive. Thy kingdom come. At the time Jesus taught this prayer, the Jews had had the experience of living under a king, of having a king, of having absolute power that could sometimes be oppressive. Those kings didn't work out so well. So well. But the kingdom of God held promise. But think of this. If we live in God's kingdom, doesn't that mean that we give over all parts of our lives to God, our job, our finances, the choices we make about how we spend our time, our friends and family, and on and on. Praying that God's kingdom will come means that we no longer choose to live on our own terms, but on God's terms. Thy will be done. Well, I don't know what God's will is, we might say. Mark Twain once said, It ain't the parts of the Bible that I can't understand that bother me. It's the parts that I do understand. You see, we only have to read the Bible to know that God's will is for us to clothe the naked and feed the hungry and care for the sick and imprisoned, to speak the truth in love, to do good to those who hate us, and to forgive one another. When we don't want to do the will of God, it's like saying, God, go be someone else's king. Doing what God asks takes courage. Takes courage, and inevitably, it will change us. In a family visit, one sibling tells of making pies for the homeless shelter and delivering them on Thanksgiving morning. A niece speaks of living in a mission in Africa for a year. Another sibling speaks of teaching a class at church, and others around the table are curious and think, maybe I should try something new. But what? Why not try what is right in front of you? If you are a professional, you may have skills you could donate to those who can't afford them otherwise. If you have a hunger for Bible study or for learning more about prayer, get a group together and start a class. We're not all called to be missionaries far away from home, but we may be called to serve in our own backyard. Thy will be done, O oh God. 
Give us this day our daily bread. This part of the prayer is about the everyday ordinariness of life. Give us just what we need each day to live. Bread, the basics, but not lots of bread. For when we have too much, like manna in the desert, it rots and goes to waste because we can't use it quickly enough. And in this part of the prayer, we also ask not only for ourselves, but for our brothers and sisters as well, to have bread enough for themselves. It's such a critical issue here in Arkansas when adults and children alike go hungry every day and when we have food deserts in the Delta where there are literally no stores that sell fresh or frozen, even frozen, vegetables and meat. We know that even if our bodies are fed physically, our hearts may still be longing for more. Give us this day means that we reach out to God every day for that connection that we all so desperately need. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. We don't always understand sin, do we? I remember as a youngster and a not so youngster, the prayer of confession in the communion liturgy went like this. We are not so worthy as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, O merciful God. Pretty hard words for a child to hear and for a child to understand. And I must say, it took me many years to sort of get over that. I, it, it, I was so put off by those words. But then I began, as an adult, to understand what a mess, what a mess I could make of things. Wanting everything my way, being selfish and spiteful. This messiness was sin, and it separated me from God. Without a lot of help every day, it's difficult to keep the focus on God instead of ourselves. And when we realize, when we realize what a mess we can make of things, then we become a little more forgiving of others. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. These lines were probably given to the disciples knowing what Jesus knew, that there were hard times ahead. There were very hard times ahead. And God knew that we all would face temptation. This is a line in the prayer to steady us, to keep us safe. In a world full of evil and corruption and violence, guard and protect us, oh God. Powerful, isn't it? This Lord's Prayer, bringing us into relationship with God and prayed earnestly every day, this prayer has the power to change us. I love rocks. You've been seeing rocks up on the screen. <laughs> I love rocks, and I brought some today. Some are smooth, and some are really rough and, and have sharp edges. But no matter, think of the drops of water falling on this rock. Every day, a few drops of water falls on this rock. It may take years. It will take years. But that rock, that rock will begin to change. The water will wear it down. 
the water will smooth its edges and change its shape. That is the effect of prayer in our lives. If we continue to come into the presence of God every day in prayer, we can't help but be changed. Hallelujah. Amen. And now in response to the, to the word this morning, we offer our tithes and offerings. So if the ushers will come forward, let's pray. Holy God, you are the source of all that is good in our lives. What blessings that you pour down upon us. And out of grateful hearts, we give back, O oh Lord, these tithes and these offerings and ask that you bless us and bless these bless this offering so that it will be a blessing to others in Jesus name amen
Each week throughout uh, this sermon series, let us pray. Our prayer time is going to come together and we're going to focus through various prompts. As each prompt is given, please feel free to either voice your prayer request out loud or just to take a moment to lift up silent prayers. After a brief pause, I will say, Lord, in your mercy, and we'll all respond together, hear our prayer. So let us pray. Holy God, we thank you that you hear the cries of your people and answer. We thank you for all that you have done and all that you continue to do. Because of your faithfulness, we come before you with open and prayerful hearts. We pray for the church, for all Christians everywhere, both with those whom we are familiar and with those whom we may never know until your kingdom comes. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all peoples of all nations. We lift up the places where there is war and famine, those being abused and oppressed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our community and for all who live and work in our own neighborhood. We pray for the city of Little Rock that your light might illuminate the darkness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those in need, for those who are sick, for those who have been hospitalized, and for those with any other hardships. For the Drawn family in Memphis. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who mourn, who are experiencing the pain of loss, that they may feel your peace and your comfort. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for ourselves, all that we will do this week and all those we will meet. Lead us to the places where we might let your light shine. Show us the ways we can share your love with others. Keep us on your path. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We know that you hear our prayers and are faithful to respond, even in ways we may not understand or see. We give ourselves to you in humble obedience, praying that we will be the vessels you use to bring about your will on earth as it is in heaven. We pray all these things in the name of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. As you're able, we invite you to stand with us for our closing. Holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty, early in the morning our song shall
shall rise to thee. It comes from an ancient church father who said, day by day, day by day, oh dear Lord, three things I pray, to see thee more clearly, to love thee more dearly, to follow thee more nearly, day by day. That is my prayer for us this week. Um, if you were a guest today, we're so glad that you came to be with us. And we have a special gift for you at the back door that the usher will hand to you. If you are interested in being a member of our church, we have a membership matters coming up next Sunday, August the 3rd. So we, we invite you to call the church office and let us know about that. And now um, Ken is going to close our service in a special way. Our Father, we 